Hi, I'm Shannon and welcome to part four of the series of five daily music tips presented for the Cape Town Music Academy. This one is entitled, I just want to <laughs> play. Um, please insert the necessary expletive at the appropriate point. Uh, this deals with my frustrations. Uh, being a woman in this industry, especially the jazz improvised world and being an instrumentalist, and how many of my experiences have been really discouraging, really off-putting, and distracting. And a lot of energy spent on this, where it could have been spent on my music, on just being, playing. When one talks about the Me Too movement or the gender equality issues, uh, immediately you're met with rolled eyeballs of, oh, here we go again, we've dealt with this. We have more female musicians, we have more women in bands, we have more um, girl bands, or this is not solving the issue at all. And um, these discussions, you are talking about the symptoms, not the disease. We haven't even started to think about a cure because we are not tackling it in the correct way. I don't even think the issues have been properly highlighted. And that's what I'd like to do through my own experiences and present that it is an issue with the entire infrastructure that needs to be addressed, not just the one-off occurrences. So I'm going to tell a few of my stories <laughs> and also present the consequences of what it meant to me and how it had affected my ability to just play my instrument. I grew up in the same industry as my brother, with the same musicians, but our experiences were vastly different. Uh, when he was around uh, playing with his friends and uh, learning with his friends, the same friends would come on to me and when I turned them down, would then belittle me on stage um, where they could. And I remember I was just starting out and things like I just come in for a solo and suddenly up it goes a semitone. Of course, I didn't manage. Um, it was always that I wasn't good enough. Um, rather than seeing it for what it was. Uh, phoning friends of my brothers again to say, hey, can we play? Yeah, oh, sure, we can play. And then they would come around and it's very clear that music is not the thing on their mind. And when I say, hey, what's this? No, oh, but you called me. You invited me over. I invited you over to play, uh, not bring this energy. And this meant that I was not afforded the same uh, privileges as my brother to learn with your friends, to play with people and learn together. That many, many young musicians um, do when they're starting out. I never had that opportunity. I went to university and uh, there were many incidences. One that stood out was a lecturer who, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one tutorial, he was not interested in my composition at all. He was just saying, come on, show me your tits. Of course I didn't, and I laid a complaint against him, which was supposed to be anonymous. It clearly wasn't, and he uh, attacked me in front of uh, many, many people verbally, and shouted and screamed at me and belittled me. How could you do this to me? Again, I took it upon myself that I had done something wrong by having uh, called him out on this, or reported him. The result was I lost out on an education. A few years ago, I met a, a musician that I really used to look up to and admire. And uh, at the end of the, he was playing on a festival, and uh, at the end, I went to meet him, and I was so excited, and oh, I just love your playing, and thank you for the inspiration. He literally looked me up and down, and said, uh, you, want a, you want a lesson? Come to my hotel room. Of course I didn't go to his hotel room, and there was more communication with him, which was, uh, he wanted me to study with him, because we had a special connection. But it was very clear that this was not a safe environment to be in. Musician I worked with, um, just before I, in, in South Africa, uh, just before I moved to Norway, and I was living in Norway already, two, three months, and I got an email from his uh, wife to say, uh, accuse me of having an affair with him. 
And this was just bizarre. It was the furthest from the truth. And I, um, I said, how on earth do you think this? And she forwarded me a mail between him and another male colleague uh, where they were having this boy banter um, about me and about uh, things that had apparently happened, which clearly never happened. The result was that I can't work with that musician again. I lose out on working with a creative person. It also means that if I was able to overlook this, which I clearly couldn't, uh, that I would not, uh, if I had to go on tour with him, how would his wife feel knowing what she knew he thought of me? Would that make her comfortable? Again, nothing to do with me. Absolutely nothing to do with me. But the consequences affect me. I have presented my music uh, for bands, for professional ensembles, and I've watched when my male colleagues come, sometimes with chicken scores of scores or parts, and apologizing, oh, I don't really arrange for this kind of set up. Then. Yet the band takes it upon themselves and makes the music sound wonderful. And then I would come with very well written parts, very clear written, everything's there. and perhaps uh, push them out their comfort zone a little bit, not even willing to try, and the first thing that comes back, your music is wrong. What happens? I lose out an opportunity to play my music, to have my music played. On the other side, I have a youth band that I can present anything to, who trust and respect me and what I do, and play it, and it sounds as it should. So that's the proof of the pudding. That Again, the first thing I think about is that I have done something wrong. It's something, my writing's not good enough. Uh, in a position where a band leader uh, makes lascivious comments or remarks or behaves in inappropriately, and I am not prepared to deal with that, I have to leave the band. I lose out on work with that band leader. Or I get the phone call from about a gig and we're discussing the final details and at the end of the, the, the conversation, but are, are you eye candy? And I respond, I'm not sure about that, but I play saxophone pretty okay. I think that's what you asked for. I, I turn down that gig. I lose work. I'm playing on stage with some musicians and I'm hearing the, the, the drummer behind me, hey, check out your ass. <laughs> what kind of a distraction is that? How am I supposed to feel comfortable? And the thing is that it's often seen as a joke. It's laughed at. And then again, I have to make myself feel as though uh, clearly I'm, I'm doing something wrong here. Please also watch Amanda Tiffin's um, video on gender dynamics in the music industry. She highlights a lot of these issues and what it means. Uh, so, so these experiences that I've had have certainly distracted me. And I've had to spend a lot of energy on this when all I want to do is focus on my playing. But I have not been allowed to be free to play. I'm currently reading a biography of a musician by the name of Billy Tipton, and it's a fantastic and fascinating story. Uh, please look it up. Um, she was born Dorothy Tipton, a saxophone player and a, a pianist in the 30s. And uh, before long, she realized that uh, she wasn't getting anywhere as a female musician, so she started disguising herself as a man. She did this for the rest of her life, so much so that she convinced everybody around her that she was, a, in fact, a man. Her five wives and the many adopted children had no idea. They had some ideas, but it was uh, she covered it up really well, having said um, she'd had an accident and um, things were not quite as they seemed, put it that way. But only on her deathbed, uh, when she collapsed, uh, and the paramedics came in and it became apparent that she was a woman, was it discovered? Now, if I think about that uh, story of somebody going to those drastic measures, of course, we're not aware of the full story of her 
perhaps a sexual orientation or, or, or why she continued so long. But still, I think about this and relate to it immensely about the times I've thought, I wish I could just be, uh, you know, in a garbage sack. And nobody can see I'm a woman or playing behind a screen because it has frustrated me so much. If I dress up, I'm criticized. If I dress down, I'm criticized. If I'm one of the boys, I'm criticized. Uh -huh. Whatever I'm trying to do doesn't seem to work. One of the other frustrating things I, I know when I've, I've performed and, and often after gigs, you, you see your male colleagues get these questions oh, about their setup or how they play or what's, what was that they played over there and what have you. I get the most common one I get is, oh, you're so small and your instrument's so big. Or, wow, you must have big lungs. Or, where did you buy your shoes? I didn't like the dress you wore. I, I, I can't imagine those are comments that maybe my male colleagues get. I want to talk about my music. I want to talk about harmonic structures. I want to talk about in-depth uh, discovery of uh, a new sound or scale. I don't want to talk about that stuff, yet it seems to be the only thing that I'm worth talking to about. So these frustrations of mine have highlighted that the fundamental thing is that trying to get on top of this, I hid. I tried to pretend I wasn't a woman. I tried to be one of the boys in the way that I felt that my womanhood was a weakness, not a strength. The history of jazz is being written by men. Winston Churchill says, history is written by the winners. But if we think that the women were not allowed to play, in the 60s, the image of a woman with a saxophone was on front covers of magazines, inappropriate pictures. Yes, they were maybe uh, the result of the producer record label, but they were not women playing instruments. There were maybe a few musicians that were around. But if we can pretend or imagine that the history was different, that women were allowed to play, that women were allowed to write their own history. We wouldn't be sitting with this expression that is designed and created by men. And for me to be full in my womanhood, the experiences I've had being a mother, my male colleagues cannot have that. So if I want to tap into my most genuine, my most authentic self, I then cannot squash myself into the history of how this music has been written. I need to create my own history. And that is my intention, to create my history of this music and present my story and only want to focus on being able to just play my instruments so that there's no frustration and there's no, nothing limiting me to do this.